Yeah, hi YouTube, it's Michael. What you see here is an assembly of my Ultimate Relay card and the extension board I built yesterday. Um, here it is. That's how it looks like. Uh, I just solved a problem that was driving me nuts. Really nuts. Um, <laughs> I lost a whole day over this. I did a stress test on the uh, I2C communication with the expansion card and I realized that every once in a while that is in a very regular fashion the transceiver which is uh, based on a hardware implementation I2C hardware imp implementation just hangs which means it's uh, it thinks it's busy and there's no interrupt that would um, well set it free again and I was thinking about what this could be uh, I had the feeling the MCU was crashing or something like that but that was not just the case I found the problem here it is <clears throat> oh, yeah. this uh, I set up a stress test that just sends one request after another to the card because I wanted to know how reliable it is and what I could see is that after a certain while the thing just goes offline so to speak which means uh, on a bus level it doesn't acknowledge the address anymore so looks, uh, let's look on how a, a regular bus transfer is supposed to work <clears throat> there's a start condition that's this thing here and then comes the address and the address in this case the A O A that's the address of my expansion card then in the uppermost uh, sorry in the lowermost bit you say whether it is a read or a write condition read means you want to read data from the device write says yeah I want to write something to the device you can do it at both at the same time after that comes an acknowledge, address acknowledge. Then comes the data. Comes a data acknowledge after every data byte. Here it is. Finally, once everything is done, I uh, only transfer two bytes, comes a stop condition. <laughs> now the faulty transfer. That's the next one. Long, 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 long stop condition. And then comes start condition again okay address and, and this time uh, this time I say I want to write something doesn't make a difference anyhow but then comes the address acknowledge great comes data data acknowledge and this is the first thing that's wrong the data is supposed to be a 1 and not for 3 um yeah what's going on <clears throat> seems to be a corrupted transfer and what you can see is that well where's the acknowledge and where's the stop condition it's not there because here comes the start condition again with the address 0668 which is the clock which means our transfer was interrupted by the clock transfer <laughs> how could this happen? yeah well I'm doing the clock transfer within an interrupt in every second and the driver, the master driver from Atmo, um, it's implemented, well, mostly in software. And it doesn't even check whether the bus is ready, whether the bus is maybe busy at the, at the moment. Okay, on, on an I2C bus there's only, usually, only one master. And, well, the master says, well, I'm the master, so why should I care about whether the, the bus is busy? I, I think that's the kind of logic they applied. Yeah, you see, <clears throat> this is what a normal write transfer looks like, data, data, acknowledge. This is the corrupted data package and no acknowledge, and then comes the clock transfer. Problem with this is the soft, um, and the, soft uh, the slave driver, which is solely hardware based, I think the AVR can do CVI master in hardware, just the slave mode. 
uh, it's in its busy state and says, hey, I'm, I'm in the middle of an ongoing transfer, so I'm busy. And the reset uh, sets the busy state only once the stop conditions or, or something like that arrives or the last data byte is transferred. And it doesn't even, uh, it doesn't check either because the last uh, data uh, byte is transferred with a read request, it says data not acknowledged, and well, when if you do a write request, uh, that's usually terminated about the stop condition, and there is no stop condition here. So it thinks it's still in its ongoing transfer while the transfer is being interrupted by the clock. After that, yeah, well, that was it. No more address acknowledged. The transceiver isn't going ready again because it still thinks it is in an ongoing transfer. And the funny thing is, they implemented it in a way with an active wait in a while loop, so it hangs. It'll never get out of this while loop, and that's it. Yeah, how did I, or am I supposed to resolve the situation? First, I won't do any transfers within the interrupts while the bus is busy. Second, um, I have a timer implemented in the slave driver that resets the condition after a certain while should this happen. But it shouldn't happen in the first place. And that's the problem here. So I guess I think I will just not do any bus transfers in that case. Um, this is a stress test I have. I mean, I'm sending one request after another. I mean, I'm not not waiting very long, a millisecond, and then comes the next request. In normal operation, this won't be the case anyhow. I mean, this kind of heavy bus transfer wouldn't be the case anyhow. If I didn't do the stress a stress test, well, I maybe may not even have realize that something is wrong. So glad I'm di I did it because you know before I'm implementing this I want to ensure this is stable and reliable and in this case it wasn't. But now I found it and I'll be able to solve it. Solve it. Uh, let's be glad I have a logical analyzer here because um, yeah, finding this just by guessing and software that could be a hard shot. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and see you soon.